bilingual web magazine, Dig Tokyo. Cinema in Theater 007. Kazoo's SNS Ekojutsu Movie Corner, 3. Reflections on Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and my interviews with J.A. Bayona, Chris Pratt, and Bryce Dallas Howard. NHK E Tele SNS Ekojutsu, aired June 28, 2018. 1. Prologue Up until now, I've interviewed a number of directors and actors for the TV show, but when my producer came to me about interviewing the director and lead actors for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, it felt like a childhood dream of mine was coming true. All American boys, especially those growing up in the 90s, go through a dinosaur phase. The biggest reason is a little old film directed by Steven Spielberg in 1993 called Jurassic Park. Along with the Indiana Jones films, Jurassic Park turned archaeology into an adventure packed profession, which I'm sure captivated kids everywhere. Without a doubt, I was one of those kids. After watching Jurassic Park, I became obsessed with dinosaurs and even dreamed of becoming an archaeologist. My fascination was further fueled by the fact that the 90s were a great time for dinosaur related scientific discoveries. One discovery was especially intriguing. Fossils unearthed in the late 20th century seem to indicate that many dinosaurs had feather like coverings. In other words, it wasn't reptiles but birds that were dinosaurs' closest living descendant. The word dinosaur literally means fearfully great lizards, and films like Jurassic Park depict dinosaurs as mostly scaly, dark gray lizard like creatures. But the latest research findings were arguing otherwise. In fact, they seem to indicate that the Velociraptor, One of Jurassic Park's main baddies was likely a feathered dinosaur. And more and more archaeologists were saying that the dinosaurs were a more colorful bunch than the gray palette pop culture had chosen for them. What's more, despite being titled Jurassic Park, I found out that most of the dinosaurs that appear in the film actually come from the Cretaceous period rather than the Jurassic period. Just for a split second, I saw the sins of Hollywood dramatizations. And the limits of big budget blockbusters. In any case, in middle school, Hollywood films like Independence Day and Armageddon made me want to become an astronaut. Nevertheless, I have always made sure to catch new Jurassic Park films on opening weekend. 2. Thoughts on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Jurassic Park had two sequels with successively lower box office results. But then came along Jurassic World in 2015, which was a massive hit. Although perfectly adequate as a popcorn flick, for a fan of the series since the original, the film was a shell without the heart and the soul of the original. Entertaining but without any substance. This new film, however, surpassed my expectations. The first half is a pulse pounding adventure, and the second half is an edge of your seat horror flick. And more importantly, it has heart and soul. Namely, in the form of the bond between Chris Pratt's character Owen and the Velociraptor Blue. The director J.A. Bayona is known for The Impossible, which depicts the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, and the fantasy film A Monster Calls. In other words, he often deals with monsters of one form or another, while balancing that with family bonds and human drama. This film has that human touch as well. What's more, it brings the topic of bioethics, which had largely been put on the back burner for Jurassic Park sequels and Jurassic World, front and center. Having watched all of these films, my number one gripe has always been the stupidity factor the fact that these characters keep wanting to return to these islands of death. In the previous film, Jurassic World, a new dinosaur theme park has opened on the site of the original disaster. This film finally puts an end to that let's go back to the island story beat. For the first time in a long while, I'm looking forward to seeing the next one. For that miracle alone, for restoring a sense of wonder to the franchise, I would rank this film as my second favorite in the series after the original. Of course, if they could just stop trying to one up themselves each time with an even bigger, badder carnivore, I would be even happier. The bad guys in these films are clearly the humans. Is there really any need to try to shoehorn in a dinosaur antagonist? 3. Button Down Shirt by Universal Language. Four, Black Necktie by Brooks Brothers. 
5. Necktie by Kamakura Shirts 6. Grey Suit by Global Style 7. White and Blue Checkered Button Down by Azabu Taylor 8. M27 Glasses by Four Nines 9. Gray Socks by Brooks Brothers 10. Double Monk Shoes by Paraboot 11. Epilogue These days, the actor Chris Pratt has become the handsome leading man of such films as Marvel Studios' Guardians of the Galaxy, but to me, he will always be the doughy, good-natured dimwit Andy Dwyer from Parks and Recreation. In my interview, he answered each of my questions thoughtfully and sincerely, and he seemed very genuine and down-to-earth. He's the definition of a man's man. Bryce Dallas Howard is a wonderful actor known for her work in films like The Village and The Help. She also happens to be the daughter of director Ron Howard, who I also got to interview for the show a couple of weeks ago. When I mentioned this fact to Ms. Howard, she recounted an experience she had as a kid, tagging along with her father on a trip to Japan. Apparently she got to join her father for a dinner with Kurosawa Akira and George Lucas, but ended up asleep on the floor from jet lag. Word is, she is currently working on her feature-length directorial debut. Speaking of Bryce Dallas Howard, the previous film Jurassic World was criticized for the wardrobe worn by Ms. Howard's character, the park operations manager Claire Deering. Claire is an enterprising, career-focused woman trying to get ahead, and wears heels in practically every scene she's in, even after everything goes to hell and she finds herself being chased by a dinosaur. A lot of viewers decried the scene as ridiculous. But if you ask me, in film, whether or not a character's footwear is practical is missing the point. While wearing shoes to match the occasion is Fashion 101, in a movie it all comes down to what the shoes and a person's style in general say about the character. Claire Deering is hungry for authority, and she works not so much in Jurassic World as she does in the business world. For her, high heels are a weapon. She's an independent-minded character who is essentially saying, anything a guy can do, I can do. I'll even do it in heels. She has no doubt in her mind. The question of cinema's relationship with what's real is part and parcel of the movie-going and movie-watching experience. Cinema in Theater 007 Kazoo's SNS Egojutsu Movie Corner 3 Reflections on Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and my interviews with J.A. Bayona, Chris Pratt, and Bryce Dallas Howard. NHK e Tele SNS Egojutsu, aired June 28, 2018. www.digtokyo.jp